First, let me say that Lonesome Dove is my favorite Western movie, miniseries, TV epic, or whatever you call it. I love the actors and the characters they play, especially Robert Duvall as Augustus McCrae. The author of that epic novel, Larry McMurtry, loosely based the story on two real-life Western heroes and cattlemen, Charles Goodnight and Oliver Loving. In 1857, Charles Goodnight served with the Texas Rangers as a scout. He led a party of men who located a woman, Cynthia Ann Parker, who had been taken by Comanches at a young age. Cynthia had become the wife of a Comanche chief, Peta Nakoma. The Texans took Cynthia from her Comanche husband along with her young daughter and returned the mother and daughter to the Parker family. Two older sons remained with the father, Chief Nakoma. One of the sons, Quana Parker, would later become a Comanche chief as well as a lifelong friend of Goodnight. The John Wayne movie, The Searchers, is based loosely on the Cynthia Parker story. Goodnight and Loving were both Texas cattlemen prior to the Civil War. Both men served in the Confederacy during the war. Like many Texas cattle ranchers, they had to leave their ranching operations and turn their cattle loose to fend for themselves in order to go serve in the war. When the war was over, both men returned to the life they knew and went to work trying to rebuild their operations in Texas. Loving had supplied cattle to the Confederacy, but they couldn't pay him what he was owed, so he went bankrupt. Woodrow Call's character in Lonesome Dove is based on Charles Goodnight and is played by Tommy Lee Jones. Augustus McCrae's character is based on Oliver Loving and is played by Robert Duvall. Although I consider the Gus McCrae character in the movie to be more noteworthy than the Woodrow Call character, in real life Charles Goodnight would be considered more noteworthy than Oliver Loving. That is due to the fact that Goodnight had a long and distinguished life and Loving's life was much shorter due to fatal wounds he received on the second of two cattle drives he conducted with Goodnight on what was to become known as the Goodnight Loving Trail. Goodnight's first foray into moving cattle to market after the Civil War was a disaster. In 1865, he gathered up free roaming cattle and attempted to drive them to market. His drive was attacked by Comanche Indians and the herd stampeded and he lost all his cattle. The next year, 1866, Goodnight reassembled a herd from free-ranging cattle and again was going to attempt to drive them to a potential buyer at Fort Sumner, New Mexico. He met up with Oliver Loving and they decided to become partners in this 1866 drive. They set out from near Weatherford, Texas with 2,000 head of cattle and encountered many hardships. By the time they reached Fort Sumner, they had lost 400 head. At the time, Fort Sumner was a military installation that was charged with feeding 8,000 Navajo Indians that the government had pulled off the reservation to be taught to farm. The land was dry and the Navajos did not take well to farming and thus were about to starve. The U.S. government paid Goodnight and Loving $12,000 in gold for 800 head of cattle, an unheard of sum in those days. It was agreed that Goodnight would return to Weatherford, Texas, and Lovett would take the balance of the herd to Denver to be sold. He did that and then returned to Texas. The next year, 1867, the two partners and friends embarked on another trail drive to Fort Sumner. They got behind schedule due to stampedes and Indian trouble, and they decided that Lovin and one other rider, Joe Wilson, would go ahead to Fort Sumner to make sure they still had a deal to sell the cattle. Wilson and Lovin were attacked by Comanches prior to arriving at Fort Sumner. Lovin was shot in the wrist and the bone in his arm was broken. They spent two nights hidden along the Pecos River. After two more days alone, Loving decided that Wilson was most likely dead and decided to try and sneak away from the Indians. 
He was successful in avoiding the Comanches and was picked up by a group of Mexicans and taken on to Fort Sumner. Meanwhile, Wilson made it back to Goodnight and the other cowboys. They immediately embarked on a rescue mission, but arriving at the Pecos River, found no sign of loving and assumed him dead. They continued the drive on to Fort Sumner, and upon arriving at the military outpost, were overjoyed at finding Loving alive. This is where the Goodnight and Loving story becomes unmistakably similar to the Woodrow Call and Augustus McCrae saga on Lonesome Dove. Goodnight spent 13 days and nights with his sick and injured friend. During that time, Goodnight promised Loving that he would return his body to Weatherford if he didn't survive. Gangrene set up in his body and Loving passed away on September 25, 1867 at the age of 54. Goodnight took the cattle on to Colorado and then returned to Fort Sumner. He dug up Loving's body and took it on the long journey back to Weatherford, Texas, where it remains today in the Greenwood Cemetery. As can easily be seen, the Lonesome Dove story is the modern-day Hollywood version of the Charles Goodnight and Oliver Loving saga of 120 years earlier. In most instances, I am disappointed in the Hollywood version of a true story, but not this time. As I said previously, I am a big fan of the movie and how the characters were portrayed. In my opinion, Lonesome Dove is historical fiction done properly. After the death of his friend Loving, Charles Goodnight lived a long and productive life. He died in 1929 at the age of 93. His legacy is that of a true pioneer in the early history of the Texas cattle business. Notice the neckerchiefs tied to the fence surrounding the Goodnight gravestone. It has been a tradition for many years for visitors to tie them to the fence surrounding the gravesite. It is the cowboy way of honoring Mr. Goodnight. Charles Goodnight is perhaps the most famous rancher in Texas history. Historian J. Frank Doby said of Goodnight, he approached greatness more nearly than any other cowman in history. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up, make a comment, and most importantly of all, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.